Father, we thank you this morning, for this is the day that you have made, and we rejoice, we rejoice, and we're glad about it. Father, we thank you, hallelujah, for releasing the weight of your glory. For those that have an ear to hear, we thank you that we receive that the weight of your glory has been released. And for those that have not an ear to hear, Father, we fervently pray right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you shatter every fallow ground, hallelujah. That you dig it up, God. Every spirit that will keep them from hearing your call, God. Thank you for releasing your glory in this place. Have your way in this service on today, God. Hallelujah. This service belongs to you. We thank you that there's deliverance here. We thank you for the breakthrough that's here. We thank you for the healing that's here. We thank you for the plan of salvation. Hallelujah. The rest in this place. Hallelujah. We thank you, God. We praise you for a word that shall come forth on today. Yes, God. That will transform us, God. Renew us, refresh us, make us whole in you. Give us the diligence and a desire to seek after your will and your word. Yes, Hallelujah. To draw near to you like never before. God, our hunger and our thirst is after you and your righteousness. God, we thank you for the woman of this house, the set shepherd of this house, the angel of this house. We thank you that the word shall go forth, your word through her with clarity, power, and understanding. And that it shall fall on good ground. Hallelujah. And it will be a word of application. We just won't hear it, God. We'll be a doers after it. We'll do what it says, God, that you said that we were supposed to do. We just bless you, God. We glorify you. Thank you for the word that's going to, hallelujah, love on us, convict us, comfort us. Hallelujah, we thank you. For every person that's under the sound of my voice, God, I thank you that we stand up, hallelujah, in our rightful place. Hallelujah, seeking your face. Yes, you said in your word, it's my people. Hallelujah, which I call by my name. Hallelujah, we seek your face, Father, not your hand hallelujah. on today. We seek your face today. Anything that's not like us, that's in us, God. Hallelujah. Like you, Father, that's in us. Father, we ask, God, that you take it away. Anything that's hindering us, anything that will, hallelujah, keep us from moving forward in purpose, we thank you have already taken it away. Hallelujah. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed. We are blessed because we belong to you. And no good thing will you withhold from those who walk upright. Hallelujah. We bless you and we praise you. From the rising of the sun to the going down of the very same. It is your name that's above every name that is worthy to be praised. And let the heart of God's people say amen. amen. Scripture for today is coming from Romans 12 chapter. First through the 21st verse. This is a letter written by Paul to the Roman church. But I think it's appropriate for the 21st century church today. So I'm going to read it from the Message Bible. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life. Your sleeping, your eating, going to work and walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Embracing what God does for you 
in the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well adjusted to your culture that you fit it into without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You'll be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Until the culture around you, always dragging you down to its level of immaturity, God brings the best out of you and develops well-formed maturity in you. I'm speaking to you out of deep gratitude for all that God has given me, and especially as I have responsibilities in relationship to you. Living then, as every one of you does, in pure grace. It's important that you not misinterpret yourselves as people who are bringing this goodness to God. No, God brings it all to you. The only accurate way to understand ourselves is by what God is and by what he does for us, right. not by what we are and what we do for him. In this way, we are like the various parts of a human body. Each part gets its meaning from the body as a whole, not the other way around. The body we're talking about is Christ's body of chosen people. Each of us finds our meaning and function as a part of his body. But as a chopped off finger or cut off toe, we wouldn't amount to much. So since we find ourselves fashioned into all these excellently formed and marvelously functioning parts of Christ's body, let's just go ahead and be what we were made to be yes. without enviously or pridefully comparing ourselves with each other or trying to be something we aren't. If you preach, just preach God's message, right. nothing else. If you help, just help. Don't take over. If you teach, stick to your teaching. If you give encouraging guidance, be careful that you don't get bossy. If you're put in charge, don't manipulate. If you're called to give aid to people in distress, keep your eyes open and be quick to respond. If you work with the disadvantaged, don't let yourself be irritated with them or depressed by them. Keep a smile on your face. Love from the center of who you are. Don't fake it. Run for dear life from evil. Hold on for dear life to good. Be good friends who love deeply. Practice pray, playing second fiddle. Don't burn out. Keep yourselves fueled and aflame. Be alert servants of the master. Cheerfully expectant. Don't quit in hard times. Pray all the harder. Help needy Christians be intentive inventive in hospitality bless your enemies no cursing under your breath <laughs> no cursing under your breath or even thinking it <laughs> laugh with your happy friends when they're happy share tears when they're down get along with others don't be stuck up make friends with nobodies don't be the great somebody. Don't hit back. Discover beauty in everyone. If you've got it in you, get along with everybody. Don't insist on getting even. That's not for you to do. The Lord says, I'll do the judging. I'll take care of it. Our scriptures tell us that if you see your enemy hungry, go buy that person lunch. Or if he's thirsty, give him a drink. Your generosity will surprise him with goodness. Don't let evil get the best of you. Get the best of evil by doing good. That's right. And the Lord's word has been blessed. shepherd. I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. 
He leads me beside the still water. Yes. He restores my soul. He leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup runs over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. This is your call to worship. Rise, oh God, and take your place, for you are good, and your mercy endures forever. Not to shame. Put your people not to shame. 
You are good, God. Hallelujah. Think about where I'm at today. Where I could have been. Think about where you're at today. Where you should have been. The hand of God has been upon us. Hallelujah. Come on, say, you are good.
worship him. Hallelujah. Worship the Lord because he's good. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. You're good. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. You are faithful, God. Hallelujah. You are merciful, God. We bless your name, Jesus. We honor you. We honor you, Jesus. We glorify your name. You're worthy. You're holy. Hallelujah. You're worthy. You're holy. You're wonderful. Hallelujah. Magnificent Savior. You are my King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah, Jesus. You're good. You're good. You're good. Hallelujah. You're good. Come on, say it one time. You are good.
Jesus. Oh. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Ha, oh, God. Oh. Hallelujah. Thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just stay right there. Don't even move on. Just stay right there. This is why I don't like annual days. This is why I don't like this is why I don't like this kind of stuff because people come to church and act like they don't know how to have church. I know you might be sitting next to somebody you don't normally sit next to or somebody else might be in your seat or maybe you didn't pay for your t-shirt so you don't have one. I don't care what the issue is. God is still good and he's worthy of our worship. He's worthy of our praise. He's worthy. He's worthy of our adoration. I don't care if you're tired. I was in that sun for seven hours just like everybody else yesterday. I don't care if you work 99 hours this week. You will not come into Kingdom Grace Fellowship Church and act like deer in the headlights. I don't know if God is worthy of my praise. Why should I praise God? Fool, because you here. Because you got up with breath in your body. Because you made it up them steps. Because you drove yourself to church. Everything might not be perfect, but you got something to give God praise for. Now I need the voices to lift up a praise unto God in this moment. No, we will not rob God like that. We will not, we will not rob God like that. We will not, we will not rob God like that. Hallelujah. He's been too good. Some of y'all sitting under the sound of my voice, you know how good he's been. Because if the enemy had had his way, you shouldn't even be here. You should have lost your mind by now. You should be sitting somewhere in a mental institution making quilts. But God kept you from losing your mind. The truth of the matter is some of us ought to have AIDS right now. But God kept it from us. Y'all ain't saying nothing, but I promise you I'll go by myself today. Yes, it's Friends and Family Day, and we're thankful for every person that came. But even that cannot cause you to not worship God. I don't care if you're mad if some of your friends didn't come. Get over it. Look at somebody and say, get over it. You're here. You give God praise. You worship him. You give him thanks. You give him adoration. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I bind every contrary spirit today. Everything that's not like God. Now, y'all got to hear me right. I'm not binding people. I'm binding spirits. So I bind every contrary spirit today, every spirit that don't want us to worship God, every spirit that don't want us to praise him, every spirit of fatigue, every spirit of irritability, every spirit of frustration, every spirit of anger. Come on, y'all. I ain't moving until this atmosphere shifts. I'm not moving until this atmosphere shifts. We'll stay all day if we have to. I'm not moving till this atmosphere shifts, and it's shifting. I feel it. Thank you, Adora. Thank you. Thank you for sending the prophetess in the house today. And thank you that she know what to do to help shift this atmosphere. Hallelujah. Come on. Thank you. Thank you for the flaggers. Thank you for the ones that are shifting. There's a shift taking place in this atmosphere. There's a shift. I bind frustration. I bind sickness and disease in the name of Jesus. I come against this upper respiratory infection in the name of Jesus. And I declare you healed in the name of Jesus. I speak to those airways and I say open in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare today healing in her body. Oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, just 30 more seconds. I need about 10 more worshipers that'll give God about 30 more seconds. Come on, I need you to open your mouth. Hallelujah. God, we love you. 
God, we thank you. God, we worship you. Lord, we adore you. For you are worthy. You're worthy of my worship. <laughs> You're worthy of my praise. From the rising of the sun to the setting of the same. You are worthy, oh God. You are worthy, oh God, oh God. You are worthy, oh God, oh God, oh God. Hallelujah. Come here, I need about 10 worshipers at the altar. Come on. Come on, I need about 10 worshipers. Come on. Come on. Yes, yes, yes. I need about 10. Hallelujah. Oh, oh God. Hallelujah. Come on, I need you to help me bind every contrary spirit. Everything that the enemy has set against this house in this day. In the name of Jesus. Come on, I need you, those of you at the altar, to help declare, declare release in this house. What if God told you he was tired? What if he told you he didn't feel like it today? Those of you that have a heavenly language, I need you to let it flow in this house. You are worthy. You are worthy. You are worthy. I declare healing in this house today. Hallelujah. I declare healing in this house. I declare healing in this house. Not just physical healing, but mental healing. I declare healing, even in some relationships in this house. I declare healing. I declare healing in this house. Come on. 30 more seconds. I need you to stir. There's a breakthrough anointing in this house today. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Stir in this anointing for just a few more seconds. Because God's going to do something powerful in the lives of his people. But the atmosphere has to be right. It has to be conducive for the spirit of the Lord God to reign in this house. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Now, somebody just begin to thank him. Come on. Come on, all over the sanctuary. Those of you that were at the altar, if you feel released, you could go back to your seat. But come on, I need somebody to begin to tell the Lord, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Yes. 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 Hallelujah. 
Because you obey and because you came out of yourself and worship God despite it whatever the it was that was troubling you I hear the Holy Spirit say tell my people it I just reversed it whatever it was that was working on your nerves before you got here the Spirit of Christ has shifted dwelling amongst us thank you for your visitation oh God thank you oh God somebody come on just just I know you clapped your hands but somebody just continue to thank you for just because I'm telling you your thank you right here wait wait, wait. your thank you right here is finna avert something that was supposed to happen this week Yo, thank you right here. Your th okay, I don't have but three people that believe it. Yo, thank you right here. It's going to stop something that was supposed to happen this week. Yo, th yo, oh, yeah, yeah, oh, yo, thank you right here. It's shifting something on your behalf. Yo, thank you. Right here. God. Come on, don't get tired of thanking him. Don't get tired. If you knew, if you could see like I see and know that God, your thank you is your key to breakthrough this week. Look at somebody and say, it's in my thank you. Woo, Jesus. It's in my thank you. It's in my ability to say thank you. Even when I don't have it yet, it's in my ability. God have mercy. It's in my ability to say thank you even if I don't have it yet because the God that I serve is able to bring it to pass. So I say thank you. Even if I don't have it yet. Anybody got a yet praise in here? Can you just look at your neighbor and say, I got a yet praise. Some of y'all might be saying, what kind of praise is that? That's a praise that says, while I'm waiting on it, I'm a yet praising. That's a praise that says, I got a praise even though it ain't happened yet. I've got a yet. God, have mercy. Wow. Look at somebody and say, I got a yet praise. Everybody standing. Everybody standing. Real quick, go to somebody, love on them, greet, greet them real quick. Tell them you're glad to see them today. Y'all just stay right there. Don't switch. Just stay right there. Come on, real quick. Just go to somebody, tell them you're glad to see them. Yes, yes, yes. Amen. Amen. Come on. Are you telling them you're glad? Make sure you greet our guests. We have several guests in the in the building today. Make sure you greet our guests and let them know. We are glad to have them with us today.
Come here, Camilla. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. We do honor and thank God for all of you that are visiting with us today. All of our visitors, would you please stand real quick? All of our visitors. Amen. 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 We thank God for you all. Amen. So glad that y'all came and celebrated with us in this, our first Friends and Family Day. Did all the babies stand up? To, to, um, uh, Mother Walker and Benita, I'm not sure who's guest or who's, but I know they got a whole bunch of babies back there. All, all of y'all stand up. Have all your babies stand up. Amen. We are glad to see y'all today. Everybody, amen. 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 Oh, amen. All right. I want to get into the word, I think. Amen. So you all can be seated. You all can be seated. I want to get into the word. I'm a little, we're a little ahead of schedule, but it'll be all right. Amen. Amen. And let me again thank, thank all of Kingdom Grace that showed up on yesterday. My God, what a tremendous time we had on yesterday. Amen. As we canvassed the community, we certainly thank Pastor Paul Mays and, and the members of the Mount Liberty evangelistic team that came down and helped us and then for the cookout those of you that served in the cookout on yesterday it's, it was just a phenomenal day i promise you if everybody that we had talked to yesterday was in here today we would be overcrowded amen but god is good and all things in his timing we're just glad to be out there letting folk know i've kind of been bouncing around adora i'm so glad to see y'all know adora and Val. i'm glad to see y'all today amen and I'm glad. I'm glad to see everybody. I, everybody. Everybody. But let me just so, so don't nobody get mad. Um, during a real, doing a tough time in my life. Anybody know anything about tough times? During a tough time in my life, there was a, a time where I knew I had I couldn't just talk to any and everybody. As a matter of fact, the Lord had had, had really set a watch over my mouth. If you don't know this about God yet, you keep living. Because there will be times when you are going through something and he will tell you to be quiet. You'll want to complain. You'll want to tell somebody. You maybe even will want to tell somebody off. But the Lord, that, 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 see, you you running and, and, okay, can I just talk for just a minute? Your ability to run and jump and speak in tongues is not an indication of your spiritual maturity. It is an indication that you have some kind of a relationship. But that ain't the sign of your maturity. The sign of your maturity is when you can hear God and obey. The sign of your maturity, watch this, is when you can hear God obey even when you don't understand it. So at a time in my life when it was really, really difficult and I had some stuff going on in my life that I didn't understand, I didn't understand why I was, where I was, I didn't understand why some stuff was going down. And the Lord allowed Adora and I to connect. So that's why I single her out today because at a real rough time in my life, she was a person that I could talk to. Matter of fact, I think, I think both of us was talking to each other and trying to keep each other sane. 
during a time when we weren't sure what God was doing. Come on, somebody. Anybody ever had a season in your life where you just, you knew he was doing something? You just wasn't sure what? And the path that he chose for you, sure enough didn't make sense. Anybody been saved long enough to know that, that the path God chose, chooses for us don't line up with what we want all the time? So as I went through one of those, I, I know God is doing something, but I ain't sure what it is seasons. He allowed me to connect with Adora and, and Val, and so I just, I'm so honored that they're here today. Those of you that have your Bibles, I, I have tossed all morning. The Lord gave me this sermon about, a, I don't know, two, three weeks ago, and then today, I thought I was going to deal with John 10:10, 10, 10, where Jesus said, I've come that you might have life, and that more abundantly, because I absolutely believe in what I'm wearing, that every life matters. I need you to hear my heart for just a second, and I'm going to get to the preach word. Every one of you in here is valuable to God. I'm going to say that again. Every person, under the sound of my voice, matters to God. Can you just look at your neighbor and say, you matter to God. And not only do you matter to God, then you matter to people who love God. So you matter to me. Every person in this sanctuary matters to me. Every person in this sanctuary is not perfect. Matter of fact, none of us are perfect. But even with your issues, you matter to God and you matter to me. Every life, look at somebody and say, every life. Every life is meaningful. Every life is purposeful. Every life has a destiny. Yeah, I need y'all to hear me. And so what happens is, a lot of times, the enemy will come, and because he comes to make the way hard, we will misconstrue that as, God don't want me to have it. But on this second Sunday in June, he wants me to affirm vow for many in this congregation that not only does he want you to have it, but you're closer to it than you think. Okay, thank you, Holy Ghost. Those of you that have your Bibles, go to Joshua chapter 4. Just lean over and tell somebody, you, you, you closer. You closer than you think. Come on, that, they, they didn't get it. Look, tell somebody else, you are closer than you think. Matter of fact, tell it to them this way, you about to cross over. <laughs> okay, I got three people that got it. Woo! Tell, some, tell them again, tell them you about to cross over. You about, you about to, you made it through the worst part of what you were going through. You are now about to cross over. Okay. Joshua chapter 4. <laughs> Thank you, Holy Ghost. Joshua chapter 4, verse 1. And it came to pass, when all the children were clean passed over Jordan, that the Lord spake unto Joshua, saying, Take you 12 men out of the people, out of every tribe, a man. Somebody say amen. amen. And command ye them, saying, Take you hence out of the midst of the Jordan, out of the place where the priest's feet stood firm, 12 stones, and you shall carry them. Somebody say carry them. Carry. With you. Somebody say with you. With you. And leave them in the lodging place where ye shall lodge this night. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children. Okay, let me not slide past that. Then Joshua called the 12 men whom he had prepared. Y'all see that? And then Joshua, thank you, called the 12 men whom he had prepared of the children of Israel out of every tribe one man. And Joshua said unto them, Pass over before the ark of the Lord your God in the midst of the Jordan, and take ye up every man of you a stone upon his shoulder, according unto the number of the tribes of the children of Israel. Watch this, that this may be a sign among you. 
that when you and your children, that when your children ask their fathers in time to come, what saying, what mean ye by these stones, ye shall answer them that the waters of Jordan were cut off before the ark of the covenant of the Lord. When it passed over Jordan, the waters of Jordan were cut off and these stones, somebody say these stones, these stones shall be a memorial unto the children of Israel forever. Somebody say forever. Look at your neighbor, look at him real good and tell him you're about to cross over. But you got to take some stuff with you. Come on, look at somebody else. Tell them you're about to cross over. But you got to take some stuff with you. Point to somebody, point to our live stream audience and tell them we declare today that you are about to cross over. But you got to take some stuff with you. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Father, now I need your help to speak this word to your people. This book of Joshua, of course, is the sixth book of the Bible. Joshua contains 24 chapters, 658 verses, 18,858 words, 624 verses of history, and 42 verses of fulfilled prophecy. Joshua is the only book in the Bible that contains no unfulfilled prophecies. Why is that important? It's important to note that everything that God told the children of Israel he was going to do, he did. In fact, Joshua, the book of Joshua, represents the promise being fulfilled. This group of people, Joshua, is known as the Joshua generation. This is the group of individuals that wandered in the wilderness but refused to give up to the wilderness. Oh, God, y'all, 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 y'all got to catch that because some of y'all have been just like the children of Israel. You've been wandering around in a wilderness type of situation. You keep thinking that you're out of it and then only to find out that you're right back in that situation. And just like the children of Israel, some of you have a made up mind that no matter how long I got to stay here, I know that I am ultimately going to get there. Do I have anybody? in this house today that's ready to get there. Woo, God. And so, and so they knew, they knew, the children of Israel knew the promises of God would come to pass and they were determined to go all the way to the end. We learned about that blessing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. We learned, he going to let me tie this in anyway. We learned about the blessing of going all the way to the end on last week. We, we learned last week, we were reminded last week about John, the beloved disciple. Anybody, was, was anybody here last week that heard about John, the beloved disciple? And, you know, depending on how you grew up, some preachers, 